Hi, and welcome to Wrong Way! Nice. And today we have Ryan from Ginger and Wheels and Andrew from the Jimmy Chang channel joining us in a fantastic unboxing of the all new Big Old EXN High Torque, which I'm really excited for. So, let me tell you more about it. Wrong Way! Alright, so today we'll be just unboxing the wheel. This is a latest Bigode EXN with all of the I don't know, new features. By the way, if you haven't subscribed to either of those channels yet, do it! Jimmy Channel, now. Ginger on Wheels, Wrong Way, absolutely subscribe. Right now. Pause the video. It's a good time you did to it? Do, it's a good time to do that. Yeah. Now we can move on. Cool. I was waiting so long for this wheel. It took me like four months. Four months? Later. Open it gingerly. Man, Ginger, maybe you open it gingerly. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how to gingerly I'll open, open it. Wheel. Very gingerly. Just, just <laughs> That's amazing. You just did that super soft. With a little butter. You don't do a hard and rush time. No. It's a little butter. That's all it takes. So, yeah. The EXN is already a wheel that it's been out for a while. We have a user's manual which will tell us that. It's a, not a user's manual. It's it's okay. just like a spec sheet for other wheels they have. They brought me here so I could read the Chinese. <laughs> That's why they flew me here. But can you read the Chinese? But I can't the read very the Chinese. Exciting, okay, the very exciting thing about the EXN is that the EXN was already out for a while. They had the speed version and essentially the guts were very similar to the RS, but just with more batteries, more top speed and a couple like better features I would say. But for me, there was always a high torque version lacking, and this is what it is. Like, this might just be... Hopefully, this is what it is. Hopefully, this is what it is, and maybe it's like the most torquey wheel the world has ever seen. 45 degree attempt on the EXN. Which will annihilate any hill that it sees on the ground. 3M charger. So it will take around 9 hours for a full charge. And with the no new short circuit protection, the minimum charging time is three hours with nine amps. That's what we get here. Nine amps is the max charge rate? Yes. Okay. All right, so now we can see the glorious plastic. It's just plastic wrap. It's plastic. And we have a mudguard. Oh, the fender. Yes. Look, it looks fender. fancy. Yeah. It looks very fancy. But the how goat. easy it is it to clip in? We'll, we'll have to find out. Yeah. I think it will be very difficult. And yeah, let's just pull it out. Oh, look at those bags. Is there anything else inside? Also, we have two uh, pads, side pads. These are the new updated Goad pads. Oh, they're really squishy. I like those. Did you have a ride in those, Ryan? Yeah, they came with my RS. How do you like them? I was not a fan, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> okay. But they're really squishy, right? Yeah, they're good. Maybe we'll also just use the Grizzly pads or Torque pads. Wait, wait, wait. We There's more. This. The Certificate of Compliance. Have you seen this before? I've seen it many times. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't mean much, then we'll take that. <laughs> Alright. Okay, it has unlock steps. That's more than the V12 had for but, me. That's cool. So, yeah, I guess we'll do that. And the question is, I mean, we have now a knobby tire, the CST C186, is it? 14 by 2.75, so the size we get also in the Sherman. And sadly, we have still the pedals that are still original. The stock but Really? Still the stock pedals. How long has it been? A year and they haven't uploaded these at all? And now we also get a small piece of metal instead a of shim. magnets. A shim. It's like the Kingsong S18. Not a big fan of that though. I guess they will still in place if you have still like torque pads on or something, which is True. pretty cool. Yeah, my RS with the big pedals just flops right down. So this is maybe its small advantage. Yeah, I guess it's cool that they stay in place if you pull them up. And there's a big fat big old logo here as well. I think that's a magnet. Is that not a magnet? I'm not sure. We have to check that out. Maybe with a different pedal. Same. No, there is no magnets here. No mag oh, so there was a magnet in the old ones, huh? Yeah. All right. So I guess now it's time to power it on. See if it works. Power button. Loud beeper. Oh, it's not in transport mode. Hey, that's dangerous. So you're gonna burn your. Uh, that's actually the first time I turned it on, and it wasn't at my e wheel to check. So be good. Wow. Check maybe if your certificate is doing all right or not. But we see one more update here. Now we have a screen in the front. I think it's smaller than the one on the 
on the RS. Yeah, definitely. Well, maybe not smaller, but awkwardly placed. I, I guess that's like still there. visible, though, if you're riding. Can you even see it when you're looking down? Yeah, 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 I can see it pretty well. Because the RS, you can see it. I but figured... Is it upside down? No, it's it's proper. It's, it's right it's... side up for you. Check it out. We'll have to see that. We'll have to see while we're riding. Yeah. It's definitely uh, strange. So be on the lookout for the food review. I guess when you're braking, you won't see it. But if you're accelerating, you can. If you're accelerating <laughs> at full speed, you can see. Oh, that's really <laughs> when it matters the most, right? Yeah, I guess. But here we can also see we have now twin charge ports. Uh, these charge ports, you can just like use one charger with nine amps or one with three, the second one with six, whatever. As usual, the single headlight dims down when it's going slow, turns brighter up. There's also a daytime running light, which looks like a gas stove. Should we lift it and spin it and see how much brighter the light gets? Yeah, we can do that. And we have to also check the free spin because this is the high torque. Ah, true. And it also has nat naturally a Kill lift switch. switch. Yeah, really cool. It's funny because the wheel still spins a bit. Hmm. That is weird. Yeah. No, it's that's quite usual. They have just a bit of resistance, so it's not that easy mm -hmm. to like let it Wait. fall off. On the ESC world, they have the EXN and the EXN Plus from EUC Service. Yep. Yeah, that's no coincidence. So we're on the EXN regular, right? Yeah, it's um, it's the regular EXN. We have also the trolley handle, which is the same. Very thin aluminum here. Very easy to break. No lock locking mechanism so but on the plus side it's not like my rs where the trolley handle might blow out when you crash and oh yeah that's right true. Off. i guess it's a bit better but it's still a bit everyone i know that has an rs with the trolley handle in the back as soon as you crash it off road the wheel spins and then the trolley handle pops out and breaks off so this might be better a little bit yeah that's also why i don't have mine because <laughs> you're still up that's yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's a perfect example right yeah so I guess it's still it's doable. Can you can you check it out? Is it like comfortable for you for the trolley handle? Yeah. Well, I'm not the expert that Adam is, so it feels fine to me. But I'm sure it's a little stiff though, bringing it up and down. Mm -hmm. But it'll get loose over time. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, that is interesting it though. This, this display is what's so kind of interesting. Can you even see that display when you're riding? Um, it? Yeah, I can see it. It's visible, but it's definitely an interesting placement. Yeah, uh, the problem is that the EXN has two batteries in the back and mm -hmm. just one in the front. So that's why it has just a bit of an imbalance. So just also if you just leave it be, just fall straight back. Oh wow. Because it's just a wheel that has more weight in the back mm -hmm. than the front. It has three packs, like two on this side and one on this one. So it's imbalanced in two ways. Wow. There's different weight amounts on onto the sides and on the front and back. I guess do most wheels go forward? No, freeway. Use what you most wheels, which is by the way a very good question, Andrew. They are pretty balanced. Like Sherman is nothing. It kind of goes to the side. I'm wondering if it goes backwards. Maybe it's better if the if it dies on you rather than face planting immediately. It has some weight that goes backwards. So. I don't know. That might be. That's a good point. But still, you still have the force of going forward, so I you're still going to probably get launched. The, uh, <laughs> the most important world. person's behind the camera, Mono Cat. Yay! Subscribe to her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We're on 64. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 64. And then it goes up to 80. Did it show off at 80? No, I just turned it back. But I guess safe cruising speed will be still around 60 kilometers an hour, which is really good compared to the 54 or 55 that you usually get on the RS high torque. Mm. So yeah, I guess we'll have to see in real life what that translates but to. How much does it actually have? I think it will be That's insane. insane. <laughs> That's the question. Yeah, I think it will be insane. But yeah, now it'll be time to just disassemble the wheel, check out what the inside looks like, and we'll get back to you once we're done with the disassembly on this wonderful desk made out of bamboo. <laughs> made of bamboo. It's not bamboo. Yeah, it's really nice. I think it's bamboo. It is bamboo. Yeah, that's kind of bamboo. Just a couple words about the tire because I forgot to mention it earlier. I'm a bigger fan of the Canda tire, which is on the Sherman, the K262. This one just had a bit wider like spots in between the 
ridges here of the knobbies or the knobs. So every time you turn with these ones, it just like sort of tilts and then you grip in with the other side. Uh, the Kenda thing does that a bit better, but that's what is this we have. Yeah, that's the CST. Okay. I'm a bigger fan of the Kenda. And actually I can show you a Kenda here. I'll tell you from experience, the Kenda 262 is much easier to ride on. Yeah, yeah, it's much better. You see here, the ridges here are so much smaller than here in between those. That's why I bought the Kenda and I'll put it onto my MSP. Also, this tire has a habit of picking up gravel. Like oh, yeah. The little pebbles and rocks get stuck in the tread. It's, it's good to make a mutual unboxing. Yeah, there you go. The shell is broken. The shell arrived broken. Oh, yeah, we got a crack. Right out of the box. Oh, that's sad. That's fancy. That's sad. Maybe it's fancy. Or, but actually, there's another crack on the wheel here in the front. I don't know if you can see it that well, but here, here's a massive hit on on the wheel. Maybe Bigot needs some more proper packaging for it, or I know the shipping company was just really violent. Yeah. But that that looks pretty nasty. It takes a lot of force to crack the corner of the shell like that too. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Boom! It's up. Okay, so it was a. Uh, Little membrane here stuck over the top of the wheel. Oh yeah, that's it's like a double-sided adhesive tape stuck to the bottom side of the shell plus the battery. Yeah, that's that's what they have, but I think that's u more than they usually put. But we have also a small, is it silicone rubber sealant around here, which is good to see. Yeah, guess. And good. as as I told you before, Andrew, we have just this battery here on this side. Mm -hmm. The other one is on the other side. And the third one is behind like where this motherboard sits, on, just on, on the, the opposite side. side. So that's why it falls backwards. So, so three much. times it's in balance, or two. Yeah. Right, so what we see now is a surprisingly clean interior. Like for Bigot, that's really clean. That's, is that a fuse? That's a fuse, that's a fuse, yeah. Very nice. Maybe we'll also need to open up the other side. We have to take this box off for sure. Yeah, because so we need to see if there's the new small motherboard for the Short circuit protection. On the uh, fuse here, yeah, on the wire, so. they didn't uh, actually so. use oh. heat on the wire here to heat shrink the connect the uh, fuse yeah, onto the wire. So they could have done that a little better. So I noticed on this wheel, on my RS, the XT connectors are loose and they flop around. When you go off road or off jumps, they actually rattle against the plastic frame of the wheel. But on this wheel, they have a little foam connector and it's the XT connector is held in this thing that's exactly as big as the connector, so you're not gonna get any rattling. This fits right in there. Keeps it nice and snug, so you're not gonna get any loose connections. And the interesting part here is that here you have holes, which you would think there's like a beeper out there, or I know a speaker, but there's nothing out there. The, the speakers are here, and the beepers I think on the other side. But anyways, there's, I think, still improvement to be seen here in, those, in this board. Like, the plastic looks more rigid, I think. It looks much more clean. Yeah. I have the RS, which came out like six months ago, and this, this wiring bag, like, this is way more put in. They have a black silicone here holding the wires in place over the axle. And look here, there is a special piece of, like, tape that doesn't let water come through, like, the middle part of the shell. They yeah. didn't manage to put it in the back, but the, hey, I guess it's in the front, which is cool. Yeah, that's interesting. There's the gas. So we got a hole in the that's motherboard right. cover here, here, and then in the bottom. Yeah, and that's all I see. Let's check out what's underneath this plastic cover. Then. You said you would remove the black box, right? Yeah. Because it's flammable, huh? I did on the RS just because it got up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit yeah. up a hill on my RS. And without the board, it was better. Without the board, 120. That's a huge difference. It's massive. Everyone I know that has the RS will remove this box, but a lot of them are putting it back on for the winter. Mm. So, oh, that makes sense. They said it was flammable. That's Marty lit it on fire, and it just lit right on fire. The cover. The, the black box, yeah. So it's supposed <laughs> wow. to, supposedly supposed to be fireproof, I guess. Fireproof. Uh -huh. But I don't know. I think know. the thing is mostly to prevent it from like sparks on a motherboard that has like a short circuit. Yes. So I think for that it's good enough, but not for much It'll more. It'll prevent sparks from hitting the battery. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, I think, their way of not letting riders get the plastic board out. Yeah. That's weird. 
You yeah. have two, what is this, like a 26 gauge wire yeah. going through a little hole here for the fan in the front. And there's and no you, quick You release. can't actually pull the board off unless you uh, cut the silicone on the connector and remove yeah. it through there. And I don't even know if the connector bit would fit through that hole right there. But okay. here we can see the, I guess it's just very similar to the RS C38 motherboard. Looks pretty clean actually, and I think that the heatsink is now much bigger. And yeah, that's a huge heatsink. This one is big, and also the whole plate is much bigger. And that's I think true. the base of the plate is like twice as big as the RS, which is great for heat dissipation. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, still the MOSFETs ones are exposed, the other ones are under the board, but that's what we see also in other wheels. So yeah, this will provide the power here. And we have the fuse. Can we see how many amps this fuse is? So it's essentially a very similar board to the RS board. Mm -hmm. It just lets more power get drawn because it has more batteries. I saw one EXN before with an XD90 uh, plug because that's the 60. Right. Uh, it's a bummer they don't do that anymore. So you said the, the capacitors are actually on silicone. And yeah, they weren't before. So if it rattled, it could bend. On my break. Monster Pro, but I think that was an over oversight. Like usually there are. Okay. And ideally what you want is also get good heat dissipation to the capacitors because now they're just in a box. There's no heat dissipation for the capacitors at all. All of the screws are wood screws. <laughs> of course. Into aluminum. The problem is I don't see yet the additional board for the short circuit protection. So I think we'll have to open up the other side as well to look for that because that's a big new thing that Bigode was talking about uh, to prevent fires and other like failure points of the BMS or I short circuits. I swear they had that on my MSP. There mm -hmm. was a board and then there was a sister board they called it. Mm -hmm. It was off to the side for short circuit protection mm -hmm. and they're not including that on the newer wheels. But what we want, also wanted to say in the meantime is that the most important thing, I guess, is that there is no see-through hole now on the inside, which was on the first DXN and on the EX, which is obviously terrible for any kind of writing, even like dusty writing or especially writing in water. Right. On no lo no Loctite. Zero Loctite on these screws. And also, they, there's six of them. They were a half a rotation or more loose for each one. And we have to put Loctite on it then. So let's do Loctite on all those. Buy a V12. I love Buy it. Buy a fire sack. <laughs> Buy a fire sack. <laughs> Don't you think that's a really weird placement for these speakers to be down here? I mean, they were like this also in the EX mm -hmm. and it worked fine for a bit, but actually fair point because the membrane is right away exposed to yeah, the rim. Exactly. So Can we please get a wheel with speakers on the top? Yeah. The only way that it should be. Or like the V12. Speakers are in front and back. The, yeah. v, the V12 has speaker internal speakers in the front and back, right? Yeah. Well, on the top would be cool too, so you can right hear Right on the top, just exposed would be fine. Yeah, that's true. We have this on the Monster Pro, but those speakers are garbage. That's well. All right, guys. Yeah. So we opened up the other side to check out what's in here. And to our, I guess not surprise, but to our interest, we found out a lot of new janky stuff here. For example, he, here are the cutout holes for a bit BMS, which was probably pressing a lot against this side. We'll, we'll get into that for in a second. There's two, yeah, on each side. Uh, and here the electronics can be just hit from the other side, uh, from a shell sort of, and might be damaged, which is a bummer. That's why they got these holes cut out. Um, yeah. There's such a small amount of clearance between the shell and the actual cells in the BMS or the battery in the BMS that they had to cut the foam part out here just to add that one little millimeter of difference. Yeah. I don't know if I like that. Yeah. And the second thing is you can see here, these two batteries are connected in parallel or in series in parallel. In parallel. And, and here you can see that they used a that's a connector that the motion uses for the motor. So it's like a phase connector sort of with three wires. But here you have two wires coming off of a splitter and here as well. That's that's just very janky solution. You have you should have like just more splitters instead of soldering two cables into one splitter. You can see they put one cable into this side. There should be one cable coming out of this side, but they said, "Hey, we can fit two in there, so let's just jam it in and 
heat shrink it and that's good enough instead of fitting a whole other connector on there. And well, all of those solderings are also very close to one another. Like that's true. you don't solder like right next to Oh, I didn't even notice that. Are That's those, like are those coated in rubber right there, or is that just completely one millimeter apart? No, I think that's coated. However, <laughs> if this <laughs> thing so melts, close. if this thing melts, that's a fire hazard. Yeah, if, so if this thing gets so hot that this connector melts, and the red wire touches the black wire, which you can see are like less than a millimeter apart, this wheel will short and catch on fire. So you need a fire sack. You just like to plug that in. I'm just <laughs> saying, like, like that's why getting... I made the thing. Yeah, that's good, that's good. So, um, we opened also up the front uh, panel here. It's really easy to pop it open. So probably if you fall, this thing will get out and you'll br break your LED and your LED ring. Here you can see that the charge ports are both connected into two of the same cables. You have the two charge ports, which makes you think you have two different cables going into two different batteries, but they both connect into the same two cables through, through this board here. And the back plate also goes out really easily with their tail light, which is also not too bright, by the way. And the holes here are for no reason whatsoever. There is no reason yeah. to have those holes. You can block them out. Dust will get in here or water very easily from the back tire, so. So this is the front of the light right here and you I assumed just from looking at this that these are actually uh, like a heat sink where air would go in flow across the board and out the back but you at can least see some arrow something but this is covered by some sort of silicone goop so that no air is going to go through there and go across your board that's just for looks yeah which is also not too bad because then water can't get in so easily but all of these upper parts just as we notice are very like easy to pop off so if you fall on this thing, probably the first thing to break will be your front or back lights and then probably your charge ports. I guess it will ride awesomely, just as a got way, but keep that in mind. If you want to have peace of mind, get a fire sack. If you want to have even more peace of mind, it's very susceptible. Get a king song or a in motion. <laughs> susceptible to damage or shorts. Yeah. Just based on what we can see here. This is why it's good to pick up one of those shells your friend makes. But there's no doubt sure. that Gotway has the highest performing wheels of any yeah. lineup. Yeah, we're not saying like that the, the wheels ride bad. It's oh. just that their electronics is very janky. Right. And dangerous. It's not like janky while well, the wheel will fall apart, but janky like like it could short fire hazard fire immediately. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so while we were at the end of this disappointed disassembly, here we can also see there's just <laughs> That's what Ryan has seen. There's just soldering here, exposed. One drop of water between the positive and negative here is gonna short out the beeper and you won't be able to hear it and it'll cut out without any warning at all. And we also tried to put the mud guard on. However, that's how it works. There's nothing blocking the mud guard from going down. And we put it on properly. We tried def deflating yeah. tire. Tires deflated. In case you're wondering, like if these are supposed to go inside the shell and clip up, that's what my initial thought was too, but there's nothing for the top to actually clip onto inside here. It actually does move up and down like that. So we'll just take it off. Yeah, it, it, we won't ride it in right it's anyways. It's more dangerous to have this on than off. <laughs> so That's the unboxing and a little bit of a teardown with the EXN with our lovely friends from the United States. Thanks so much that you're here. And if you have any ideas in the comments on what we should do, what maybe adventures we should undertake, or comparisons or whatever, what you're interested in. What can we do with this wheel that we haven't done with others? <laughs> How can we prove to you that this wheel works? Uh, so post that below. And if you're still here, leave a like in the video. Subscribe to see more content like this. I'll see you in the next video. See you soon.